Well, good morning, good morning, good morning to each and every one of you. It is so good to be back with you on today. This is Pastor Kelvin Lucas coming to you live from the main tabernacle and taking my fourth ministry live here at the South Rocky Mount Community Center. Listen, I can't tell you how glad I am to be back with you, hoping that you've had a blessed Thanksgiving holiday and looking forward to the upcoming Christmas holiday next month. But we're just so glad to be here. We're so glad that you have decided to drop by and give us a give us a visit. For those of you who are visiting with us for the first time, we want to say welcome. Welcome to you. And I invite you to visit our website, uh, takeitbyforce.net, takeitbyforce.net. And on there, uh, on our webpage, you can find out all all the information you would like to know about us, what we do out in the marketplace. As a youth and young adult outreach ministry, uh, we are celebrating our 20th year, our 20th year of ministry, and so we're just thankful. We're just thankful that the Lord has given us uh, this opportunity, this opportunity to have an impact in the marketplace. And while you're you're there on our website, I invite you to swing by our inspirational merch page. Yes, our inspirational merch page. You get to pick up the get your sweatshirt. If you like to stay warm during this during this, during this season, and so uh, again we thank you for visiting with us. And to our repeat visitors, we're thankful for you and your continuous continuous uh, support as as, as always. Uh, by way of announcements, uh, we do have coming up this Tuesday. Yes, this Tuesday, November the thirtieth, our young youth and young adult male. Uh, spirituality and sexuality and godly perspective Zoom session coming up. Yes, 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 yes. I'm excited about these sessions because of spirituality and sexuality. It is under attack in this hour. And so we need to, to seek God's word now more than ever. And with STDs on the rise amongst our youth and young adults, we need to be having honest, com honest conversations honest and open conversations. And so uh, ages 12 and up, young men, young men, please uh, check out our Zoom session. You can find the Zoom registration link. Uh, there's a tab there on our Facebook page, but also it's available. You can find the tab, the uh, registration link also on our website too. All right, so we don't want you to, 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 to miss that. Uh, this coming Tuesday at 7 at 7.30. All right, well, listen, we're going to prepare our hearts for the word of the Lord. I'm excited about the word on today. just want to share a few encouraging words with you. But before we do that, we just have one song we want to sing on this morning. It says, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. How many have the victory on today? In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, say not you have to flee. Oh, tell me who can stand before us when we call on that great name. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, we have the victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, they don't you have to believe. Oh, tell me who can stand before us. Yeah. 
have the victory. Amen. All Amen. things we have Amen. the victory. But you have to believe that. Amen. You have to believe that. You have to confess that. And you have to live your life yes. with the victory Amen. that has been given to you, regardless of what external factors may be uh, in front of you. Mm -hmm. We have to learn as people of faith to mm -hmm. have the victory that has been given to us. Don't let circumstances and situations come and take it away from you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I can sit down right there. <laughs> yes, I could. I really could. Yes. I really could. Mm -hmm. Stop letting people and circumstances Stop. come and take the victory away from you. Amen. Posture yourself. Posture Amen. your mindset. Pull yourself together. Yes, Lord. Stop letting the devil have his way in your life. Mm -hmm. And start standing on the victory that Jesus died mm -hmm. on the cross for. Amen. Amen. There's no reason. We as Christians should live a defeated and depleted life. There's no reason for it. There's no reason for it. Yes, preach. Stop living a defeated and depleted life. And walk in the victory that has been given to you. Grab your Bibles, if you would, for just a few minutes, and turn with me to the Gospel of Luke. Want, wanting to continue to look at the Gospel according to Luke chapter 1, all right? And I hope you have something to take notes with. I always encourage you as people that when they go to the house of the Lord, you know, you bring your Bible, of course, to always bring something to write with, pencil, pen, paper, whatever you have, so that you can take notes. Chapter 1, verse uh, 65 and 66. 65, 66. Let's take a look at that for a few minutes on today. Luke chapter 1, 64 and 65. I'll be coming out of the King James inter uh, interpretation on today. It says, And fear came on all that dwelt around about them. And all these sayings were noised abroad throughout all the hill country of Judea. And all they that heard them laid them in their hearts, saying, What man of child shall this be? And the hand of the Lord was with him. Again, verse 66, it says, And all they that heard them laid them up in their hearts, saying, what man of child shall this be? And the hand of the Lord was with him. All right. So I, I want to uh, speak to you for a few minutes uh, from the thought on today. I can't wait to see this. I can't wait to see this. Now, immediately from that thought right there, that statement, I can't wait to see this, takes me right on into what I want to focus on today, which is the word anticipation. Yes, the word anticipation. Anticipation is simply this. It is an expectation of a result. In other words, you are you, you're expecting some type of end result to happen. Yes. You are looking forward. You are looking to see a certain thing happen in life. Yes, Lord. And life, oftentimes, is full of anticipation. Mm -hmm. Full of anticipation. You know, we're just coming from the uh, Thanksgiving holiday, where I'm sure a lot of 
and they were anticipating having uh, a, a less time visiting family and friends, or they were anticipating having some uh, type of meal on the table. And life itself is full of anticipation, mm -hmm. where you are, you are expecting to see some type of result in some yes. fashion. Yes. Yes. And there's nothing wrong with anticipation. I think anticipation is good. Because it, it, it helps, I think it helps to keep life fresh. Amen. It helps to keep life exciting. Because it gives you something to look forward to. But now not only is anticipation a, a, an expectation or looking forward to uh, some kind of result, mm -hmm. but you also have to understand that anticipation is also a product of participation. Anticipation is a product of participation. And now, with, now with the word participation, all that simply means is that there is some type of activity going on. Okay? Now, now when you now when you think about participation, what that simply means is, you know, in real participation, what that does is it it, 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 it ties in the elements of time, choice, effort. Emotional investment and then of course you have the reality. So when you talk about participation, you, you take again okay, you talk about time. And then you uh, making the choice. What do you do with your time? And then you put, you know, you, you choose to put forth some type of effort mm -hmm. into doing something with yourself, with your life. Mm -hmm. Okay. But now, of course, you know, when you put forth effort, there's always that emotional investment that you have to include in there. And the emotional investment comes in. Well, you know, some days you may feel good. Some days you may feel bad. Some days. You you know, you may enjoy it. Some days you may not enjoy it, you know. But that's, that's just a part of life, where you have the peaks and the valleys of life. But then the, the reality it ends up being your what? The result. Ah, <laughs> uh, didn't I tell you they were connected? Listen, listen. If you, if you want anticipation to be effective, then there's got to be some participation. See, oftentimes people they they anticipate a result. They 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 anticipate something positive happening. But the question should be, are you putting anything positive in it? Because if you're not putting anything positive in it, then then, then don't 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 anticipate something positive coming out of it. Whatever you put in, that's what you're going to get out. If you put junk in. Well, you can anticipate getting what? Jump out. That's life, y'all. That's life. The level of participation, the level of effort, the level of time investment, the type of choices that we, that, that we make in life, the effort that we put forth as it relates to those choices, the emotional investment that is tied up, it, it, is, it is impact. It, it, all of that is impact. And has a has a a direct correlation with what we can do, what you, what you anticipate. Now, now look here. When you talk about participation, you have to look at well, who are the parties involved? Oftentimes, you know, it's, it's at least you know you got at least two two individuals. Well, one, but for our purposes on this morning, uh, participation. I want to I want to rehearse and revisit. You know, the parties that are involved as to what we've been looking at, 
you have a priest whose name is Zacharias and his wife, whose name I'm just abbreviating, whose name is what? Elizabeth. You have these, you have this couple. They are the participants. Okay? And we understand we and what we learn about them, what we learn about them back in Luke 1, look, I'll turn to Luke 1. Luke 1, verse 6, for just a minute, it tells us, uh, it gives us a brief history of their bio. It says that, and they were both, what, righteous before the Lord, before God. They, had, they, 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 they were in right standing with the Lord, doing what? Walking in all the commandments and what? Ordinances of the Lord, blameless. Amen. So what that lets us know, maybe that the Lord considered them to be relatively decent individuals that had a relationship with him. And so based upon that, because really for, for Zach and Elizabeth, Luke chapter 1, verse number 6, I'm going to put a box around that. You know what that, you know what that's called? That's, that was their foundation. Mm. <laughs> you have got to have the right foundation. If, I'm teaching already. You've got to have the right foundation in place if you anticipate having a quality of life that God deems as honorable. Notice what I just said there. Uh, having a quality of life that God deems honorable. Not honorable before men, because what is honorable before man is not necessarily honorable before God. The goal is to have a foundation and a life that is honorable before who? Before God. Because it says there in verse number 6, who were both righteous before who? God. It didn't say righteous before man. Which lets us know they didn't they, they were living a life based upon the standard that was set by who? By God. Not man's standard, not the world's standard. Because the world has a pretty dingy standard. The world has a pretty raunchy standard. The world has a a very nasty standard. So you gotta, you gotta know your foundation, your foundation, your foundation. And so, based upon that foundation that they had, that, that okay, yeah, their reality started out a little, a little rocky, because it says Elizabeth was not able to, to have children right away. But what the Lord looks for is consistency in relationship. No, they're not perfect, but He does look for consistency. Yes, Lord. In trying to maintain relationships, he knows that our righteousness is that filthy rags. But what he does look for is a heart that will seek after him, a heart that will not be content with fornication, a heart that will not be content with adultery, a heart that will not be content with homosexuality and lesbianism and alcoholism and gambling, a heart that will not be content with First Corinthians six nine and ten, but a heart that will seek after him. And I'm not hating on nobody. No, 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 no. But I am taking a stand against immoral behavior. Because you have to be able to separate the behavior from the person. Oh, come on, talk to me, somebody. Because the behavior is just simply a representation of what's on the inside of the individual. The behavior is simply a manifestation of the stuff that's on the inside of the person's heart. And so we have to start, we have to start, when, 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 when we're teaching God's work, we have to start calling out these spirits that are dwelling, that, that, seek to, that seek to find a dwelling place in the chambers of the heart. Ah, you just play a hate, you just hate, you just hate, you just hate. No, I'm not hating, I'm teaching, it. I'm, call, I'm calling out spirits. But when you have the right foundation, then what that does is it sets up some kind of anticipation. 
Ah, uh, you don't mind waking up in the morning. Why? Because you're waking up with the right foundation underneath you. Ah, uh, yesterday may have been a little, may have been a little, it may have been a little rough. It may have been a little tough. But guess what? At the end of the day, what's going to emerge from that, from that, from that is that you still have joy. You still have a certain level of victory in your life. Because you have the right foundation. And so for them, for them, the anticipation was clear. The anticipation for Zach and Elizabeth was clear. Where is it? Down there in Luke chapter 1, verse number 13. It says, But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is what is heard, so that he was a praying man. He didn't stop praying. For thy wife, for thy prayer, and thy wife shall do what shall bear thee a certain. That's anticipation, isn't it? You can anticipate this happening. Lord, help us. Sometimes when people, when you don't wake up with anticipation, ah, you just take whatever life gives you. You feel, Lord have mercy. When you wake up with anticipation, you wake up with joy and gladness. Why? Because you know that the Lord has made some promises to you. Come on now. He says, Thou, Elizabeth shall bear thee a son. And thou shalt call his name what John. And thou shalt have what John and black law. That's the anticipation right there. Somebody listening to me on the day. You need to have some anticipation about you. You need to have some joy. You need to have some gladness. But guess what? Joy and gladness is not going to come as long as you got a sloppy foundation. Sloppy disease breeds what? Sloppy disease. People, are, you're, you're expecting greatness to occur, but you're not participating. You're not putting anything of value in it. You want the sun to shine in your life, but yet you keep bringing in a bunch of clouds. Verses 13, 14, 15 are, are jam packed full of juicy anticipation. Lord have mercy. He said, You shall have joy. And, and look at verse 14. He said, It's going to impact you, but guess what? It's going to impact somebody else. Lord have mercy. Oh, that's enough anticipation right there. That's enough anticipation. Anticipation means you wake up not just about, it's not just about you, but it's about what God can do through you to help impact the life of somebody else. Whether you get recognition for it or not, let the Lord use you. Whether anybody says, well done or not, let the Lord use you. Sometimes we're waiting for people to tell us how good we are and how wonderful we are and how good we look and how, 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 how good the sound was and how good the, the, the word was. Just do what God told you to do. He said, for he shall be great. What you're going to bring forth shall be great. Full of anticipation. Full of anticipation. See, 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 see. See, when, 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 you, when you know what the result is going to be, Lord, have mercy. When you already know what the Lord says the result is going to be, then that helps you to shut other people down when they, Lord, yes it does, yes it does, yes it does. See, see, sometimes the reason why some of you, the reason why some of you, 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 you can't get nowhere in life is it's because you're so, you're so easily persuaded by what other people say. Ah, oh, you have no stability. You're like a kite dancing in the wind. You, 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 you can't, you can't find yourself on a charter on the right pathway. Why? Because as soon as you think you're on the right pathway, you allow somebody to come and whisper in your ear. And as soon as they whisper in your ear, you just fall off, all off kilter. And it's like you're just, you're just dangling, dangling, dangling. It's like you're existing, 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 and you really don't know what you're supposed to be about. Why? Because the foundation in your life is not solidified. When your foundation is solidified, the psalm says, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust. See, that's the problem with somebody. Are you trusting in too many things? You trusting in 
You trust you know you, you, you when I say him, you're trusting in that boy. You're trusting in her. Ah, you're trusting in that girl. Oh, she looks she looks so good. She looks like a Coca-Cola bottle. Ah, but you're trusting her too much. Ah, he looks like Hercules and built like a donut. Ah, but you're trusting in her too much. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the what the sweet is what? Fame! What's a fame? A fame is how something is built. Ah, you're trusting in the wrong. I dare not trust the sweetest thing. But holy lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock, I said. All other ground is what? You can anticipate what you think and say. Anticipation. Because see, when the time came when the, when the child was born, I'm just, this is just review. When the, when the child was born and they took him to have him circumcised, the first day the people began to say, Oh, there he is, there he is, they're going to call him John, they're going to call him Zacharias. They're going to call him Zacharias. There's little Zacharias. Over at Luke 1 59. Oh, it's little Zacharias, he's named after his dad. He's going to be just like his dad. His mother answered and said, not so. That's what, that's, that's, that's what we left off on November the 7th. The last time I, I talked to you, I said, not so. She said, not so. Not so. So you have to learn how to say not so. But see, you can't say not so unless you know, unless you are anticipating. See, the reason why Elizabeth could say not no, not so, is because she already knew what the end result was, what was going to be. The Lord had already shown and already told him what the end result was going to be. So all they had to do was that kiss him. Lord have mercy. She said, not so, but his name shall be called John. That's what she told him in verse 60. And they said, what do you mean, little Lizzie? You done lost your mind. You done bumped your head. Uh, ain't nobody, there ain't nobody in your family called by that name. Exactly. There ain't nobody in my family that called it. Some of you, you need to learn how to do something that ain't never been done in your family before. You need to step outside, get out the boat, learn how to get outside the box. Well, ain't nobody done that. It's good, good. That means the opportunity was waiting on me to do it. And when you and when you recognize that the opportunity was waiting on you to do it, don't waste the opportunity. Go ahead and get on in there. No reason for the Lord has just given them that word and told them exactly what the child's name was going to be and told them exactly what his purpose was going to be. There was no reason for them to allow the, the, the community to come and talk them out of it. I'm glad nobody else has done it. That lets me know that was, it, it was meant for me to do it. Oh, Lord. Ah!
I go tell you that name, Elizabeth. Elizabeth, sit up so you don't walk so much. Then I turned over to Zachariah, and I said, Zachariah! They made signs to him because he couldn't speak. What, what is his name? What is his name? And Zachariah couldn't say a word, but he could write. In verse 63, this is where I left off on last night. Verse 63, he, they, he called for something to write with. He said, and he wrote down, said his name is John. And they were all astonished. What? 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 I know that I can see them now just whispering. Well, they don't know that. The Lizards and John are just right from off their mind. They were that boy, John. They, know about they, they don't know what they're doing. They're crazy. They're crazy. Oh, you know how people talk. You know how people talk. They get in their little clicks. They get in their little groups. When you're doing something that's not ain't nobody else, don't go. That means you're going to lean on the Lord more. <laughs> ain't nobody else out there doing uh, Let's go. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. It says there, verse 64, and his mouth opened immediately and his tongue loose. He spake. And he praised God. So, so what we have here, what we have here, a new reality for Zacharias. He was able to speak again. He got his voice back. to see is there's something else happening. Then there's, there's something else going on here with this with this couple, with this husband and wife. Mm. Because see, it says down there, let's, let's, let's keep looking here. At verse number 65. You see verse 65? Mm -hmm. It says, and fear came. Mm. Now, now oftentimes when you think of fear, that you know you think of someone who's what? Scared. Mm -hmm. Or frightened mm -hmm. because of what is unknown. Mm -hmm. When you don't know what's going to happen, sometimes, you, depending upon what the situation is, you, you become fearful. But there's another definition also of the word fear. And fear can also mean that there's a certain level of respect, mm -hmm. there's a certain level of reverence, there's a certain level of awe given. Huh? But 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 the question here, the question is because it says that and fear came on all that dwelt around. Mm -hmm. And so then what you have to realize and understand is that there was a certain level of respect. There was a certain level of respect that Zacharias and Elizabeth had. What verse is that? Verse number what? 66? Mm -hmm. It's 66. 66 yeah. Okay. There was a certain level of fear. There was a certain level of respect that came. Uh, what is it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Thank you. 65, 65. There was a certain level of respect that came. The people have, I believe, that the people have a certain level of respect for Jack, for Zacharias and Elizabeth. Why? Because they have a certain level of wisdom. Mm -hmm. They were willing to follow God's instructions. They didn't name the boy that Zacharias did. did they? No, they named him what? John. Why? Because that was the direction that the Lord gave him. What? Yeah. Even though it was not popular. They were willing to follow God's and listen, you want people to respect you? Oh, no. oh thank you, man. True respect will, especially from those who are supposed to be, true respect comes when you follow God's instructions and directions, regardless of what everybody else thinks or says about you. I'm going to say that again. True respect in life only comes when you follow God's order, when you follow God's word, no matter what others may think or say about you. Godly respect. You want people to have godly respect for you. 
Because you were willing to do what? Follow God's direction. Yes. They were willing to follow God's direction. They were willing to follow God's order regardless of what other people were saying. Okay? Now, watch this here, watch this here, watch this here, watch this here, watch this here. Okay? It says there, and they feared, their fear came all on all them that dwelt round about them. And all these sayings were what? Noise abroad throughout all the hill country of Judea. So word spread around. The word got out. The news got out about what was going on in the, in the, in the life of this family. All right? Now watch this, watch this, watch this. And I'm all I'm all Because what we recognize here is that there was a certain level of respect. There was a certain level of, of, of they, 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 they looked up to these people this couple, because this couple didn't mind stepping outside the box. But now that takes us on into the, into the next verse now, into the next verse. It says, and all they that heard them laid them up in their what? In their hearts. In other words, those that heard, they heard the story. They heard about, you know, how Zacharias and Elizabeth had got up to this point. And people are just taking it to heart. They're taking it to heart. Yeah. And look what they're saying. Look what they're saying. Say that they, 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 and they pondered on it. They say, they, they were saying, what, you see that word? Look at that next sentence. What manner of child shall this be? Now, I want you to look at how it's written, how that sentence is written right there. And I want you to look at the punctuation. Because there in verse number 66, it says, well, it's, what manner of child shall this be? Now, at the end of that sentence there in my Bible, it has an exclamation point. It has an exclamation point. Uh -huh. Now, oftentimes, when you, when, what, what verse is that? Verse number 66, okay. What? Manner of child shall this be? Exclamation point. The exclamation point oftentimes emphasizes excitement, doesn't it? Yeah. Excitement. You know, it's all that, yes! Exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. So, so with that sentence right there, there's a certain level of what excitement okay. they go. Mm -hmm. Notice, there's not a question mark there. Mm -hmm. Huh? You see that there? It's key that you see. There's not a question there. Lord, help me, Lord. Help me explain it. See, when, when you have the right foundation, and the Lord gives you a gives you an assignment, you don't have to question it. Amen. Rather than question it, get what? Excited. Oh, come on here. Come on here. Come on here. Stop questioning it and do what? Get excited. Oh, Lord. But see, you gotta be, but you, but you, but you gotta be rooted and you gotta be anchored. See, see, when you rooted and anchored in the Lord, you won't question your life. But rather, you get up every day being, well, you know, you get up thankful and what, excited. Ah, oh, yeah, 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 you may have a mountain in front of you, but still you get up, what, with a certain level of anticipation. Not questioning whether or not God has given me the victory, but what, excited about the victory that God has given me, and utilizing that as my motivation to go out there and execute. So that exclamation point is key right there. Get what? Get excited. Get excited. Get excited. Get excited. Ah, that's where anticipation comes in. 
Why? You're, you're excited about what the Lord is doing in your life. Hmm? Hmm. Now, watch this here, watch this here. I'm ready to close out. Because they said, what manner of child shall this be? Hmm. Now, that word manner. Somebody say manner. Manner. What manner? What manner? What manner? Hmm. Now, the word manner, when you think of the word manner, uh, let me just use Yes. Think of a house like a mansion. Okay. Okay. You think about M A N R. Oh. Okay. Now, but, now this is M A N N E R. Oh. Now, when you think of manner, I will give one word: style. style. What's your style? <laughs> What's going to be his style? Because you know people are going to be watching. Amen. <laughs> uh, now, now, uh, now, I'm just being real. Now, that's not. Now, listen. That's not to. to to, to, to puff you up. That's not to, 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 to make you get the big head that, that people are going to be watching you. That's just the reality. Yeah. That when you go out in public, people watch. People watch you. Yeah, they watch you. Okay? That's just no answer. You know, if answer for they they will they won't watch you. What are they watching? Your style. Mm. Your style. What do you mean, my style? They're watching to see how you do what you do. That's your style, your, your mannerisms. They watch, like my kids, they watch me. Mm -hmm. As a father, they watch to see what I do. Do I always do everything right? No, I don't. I'm not perfect. Do I have sympathy? I sure do. But on average, though, on average, I should be hitting hopefully 80%. Because life is 80 20, really. Mm -hmm. And whenever, you know, whenever, <laughs> whenever they challenge me, you know, I say, well, put it under my 20. That's what I need to work on. <laughs> and we all have to be I'm being real. We're not, none of us are perfect. Okay? But, 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 but style. Style is important. Style is important. So, so what manner? What manner of child shall this be? What manner of child shall this be? They're not questioning me, but they're excited about what's to come out of his life. Well, what's to come out of this life? What is this style? Mm -hmm. What is this style? Okay, well, let's look at this style real quick. Go back to verse number 15. Same chapter, all right? Same chapter. Mm -hmm. Same chapter. We're, this is Luke 1. All of this is in Luke 1. All right, go back to verse number 15. Mm -hmm. What man? And this, this is reason to get excited. Mm -hmm. Lord, have mercy. Ah, oh, but when you. This is a reason to get excited. Verse number 15. Right there, verse number 15. Luke chapter 1, verse 15. You got it? There, I got it. It says, For he, talking about John now, he shall be what? Great. Great. Oh, yeah, that's great. That's quality. He's going to have some quality about himself. I didn't say quantity. I said what? Quality. Huh? Seek quality first. Oh, see, I done messed up right there. Because, see, we live, we live in a time that puts the emphasis on quantity Quantous. first. Yeah. The more quantity you have, mm -hmm. then the better quality of life. No, 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 no. Then you got it all on. You, you need to have quality first. quality first. Oh, come on here. Talk to me. You need to have quality in place first. Paul said it. I, I'm glad I wrote this scripture down. Keep, keep your finger, keep a bookmark right there in Luke 1. Uh, go to 1 Corinthians 3 for just a minute. 1 Corinthians 3 for just a minute. Alright? 1 Corinthians 3 for just a minute. Quality comes first, you all. Quality comes first. And quality is all the foundation. I don't care. You can have a you can have a hundred story building, but guess what? If this built on a solid foundation, those hundred stories don't even matter. Don't even matter. But foundation is what matters. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10. Paul says, according to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, he says, I have laid the foundation and another is going to do what? Build on it. But now look what he says that's next. He says, but let every man do what? Be careful. That's what take heed means. Watch it. Be careful. Take heed as to what? How you build. The foundation 
represents what? The quality. What you put on it represents what? Quality. Because really, the, however, whatever based upon the quality of the foundation really is going to determine how many stories you can put on top of it. Oh, Lord. Because if the foundation is jacked up, then they don't even need to put that on top of it. For other foundation can no man lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. That's the quality foundation right there. Now, look what he says there. Now, watch this verse 20. Now, he says, if any man build on this foundation, Paul wasn't crazy. He knew that he knew, he knew, he knew. If any man build on this foundation, now, here comes the quantity. Here comes the quantity. You see that right there? Here comes the quantity. Go. Silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, all that is what? Quantity, quantity, quantity. He said, now listen, if you come with that stuff, you better watch it. Because he says in verse 13, he says, every man's work shall be made what? Manifest. In other words, every man, your, your quantity is going to be tried. For the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by the fire of life will test your quality and quantity. It's about quality, quality first. And then you be careful as to what you build, as to what you put on top of it. So let me get back to my point. I just want to say that. I just want to say that. So let me get back to, let me get back to my point. So we're talking about, go back to Luke 1 now, Luke 1, 15. Luke 1, 15, okay? It says, he shall be great. Great represents what? Quality. He said, he shall be great in the sight of the Lord. What else about, what about, what else about his manner? He and shall, and shall drink neither wine nor what? Strong drink. So, he's going he's gonna to resist intoxicating behavior. Intoxicating behavior. Yes, Lord. Intoxicating. And there, and there are plenty of things you can become intoxicated with other than alcohol. Amen. You can become intoxicated with sex. You can become intoxicated with gambling. You can become intoxicated intoxicated of many other things in life. You can, you can become you can become intoxicated with materialistic wealth. You can become intoxicated with social media. Social media will kill you. It, oh, come on, everybody can talk to me. It will dwindle your, your reasoning capacity. You can become intoxicated with your world at long. So his tendency is to resist. Resist. His tendency is to resist. Uh, you gotta learn how to resist in life sometimes. Uh, you gotta learn how to say no. You gotta learn how to say not so to certain things in life. Let's keep going. And he shall be what? Field. Somebody say field. Field. You see that word there? He shall be. Now that, that gives us the content. Content represents what's on the what? What's on the inside of the package? The content. The contents. He shall be filled with the presence of the Lord. Now watch this here. Watch this here. He shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb. Now watch this here. Verse 15 is all about quality, really. Now watch this here. Now when you get to verse number 16, what does it say? And what? Circle that word many. Many, circle it, highlight it, do something to it, because now you start getting into what? Quantity. Because many indicates the number, doesn't it? Yes. Many. So it has to be in place, first of all, before you get to the many. This stuff right here. Yeah. <laughs> Verse 15, you need, you need verse 15 in place before you can get to verse number 16. Yes, Lord. 
This represents the impact. The impact. It's really verses 16 and 17 represents his impact in life. Because it says there, and many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God, and he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people, what? Prepare for the Lord. The impact of this man's ministry was that he was going to impact the what? The heart of the people. He was going to impact the heart of the people. That was the anticipation. And so what and so what verse number 66 really say here when it says, What manner of child shall this be? In other words, all they were really saying, I can't wait to see this. But they weren't questioning it. They were excited about it. It's time for you to be excited about your life. It's time for you to be excited about life. It's time for you to be excited about life. It's time for you to be excited about life. But true excitement in life only comes when you have that true relationship with the Lord. That's the key. That's the key. I'm going to tell I'm going to stand here and tell you otherwise. That's the key. That's the key. True excitement is rooted in relationship with Jesus Christ. You know, you 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 want to anticipate greatness, but guess what though? You got to participate in it. You got to participate in it. You have to participate in it. And so if you don't know who Jesus is on today, or if you or, or if you backslidden on today, you got to participate in your greatness. You want to be great, but you got to want to participate in it. And it starts with a true foundation in the Lord Jesus. You got to recognize that you have to take the time to recognize that change is needed in your life. Yes, Lord. And then when you recognize that change is needed, then you make a choice and you do something Come about on. it. Come on, you do something about it, which means what do you have to do? That may include you may have to tear down and remove some old stuff out of the way. Uh -huh. And guess what? And lay a new foundation. Uh -huh. And then once you lay a new foundation in your life, then you can begin to frame a new reality. Now, understand this. You, 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 understand this. Does that mean that you're not going to still have, you know, you're going to have to deal with the emotions of life? Yes, you will. There are going to be some days you're going to enjoy. There are going to be some days that you will not enjoy. But the key is your foundation is in the right place. You have to make that emotional investment. Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you're expecting greatness out of your life. Yes, Lord. But it only comes through true relationship with the Lord Jesus. And a commitment like Zacharias and Elizabeth had to stick with it. And to invest in it. Which means you got to do your part. And invest in your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. If there's one today you don't know who Jesus is. And you say, you know what, I do need a change in my life. I do need to do away with this old foundation and, and bring in a new one. If that's you on today, I want you to pray this prayer with me. I don't care what kind of lifestyle you're living, but if you but but if you're sick of that lifestyle and you're ready to embrace something, if you're ready to embrace a new direction in life, today is your day. I want you to pray this prayer with me. Only if you're serious, though. Pray this prayer with me, dear Jesus. I am a sinner, but I believe that you died on the for my sins. I believe that you were buried. I believe that God raised you from the dead and that you live now and forevermore. I surrender my life to you right now. Come into my heart as Lord and Savior. I receive you gladly right now in Jesus' name. Amen. If you pray that prayer with me and you are sincere, then we come into agreement with you on today that you have given your life to the Lord. Go to our website, takeitbyforce.net. Email us and let us know that you've given your life to the Lord. Provide us with your mailing address. We want to get this pamphlet out to you entitled, Now What? 
a guidebook for new Christians. You want to plant this into your hands and follow up. Today is a good day for you. And we celebrate that you have made a willingness to participate in this new beginning of your life. It's a good day for you. And we celebrate what the Lord is doing in you. Nothing is too hard for God. All he asks for is a willing heart. A willing heart on today. Well, listen, we're getting ready to close out in prayer. Father, we thank you right now for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to study your word. I pray that something was said, oh Lord, to encourage and motivate the, the heart of the listener. Father, we just pray for families that were represented here on today, whether in person or virtually. We pray, Lord, for, for families that were represented. We pray for the leaders over those families. Lord, that you will give those leaders, whether it's a mother or father, husband, wife, grandmother, grandfather, auntie, uncle, big brother or big sister, Lord, we pray, God, that you would give them renewed strength in you, Father. Ah, uh, some have, some have grave responsibilities upon their shoulders. Lord, give them the strength to press their way forward. Help them on today, Lord. Help them, Lord, to move forward with great anticipation each and every day. We thank you right now for the victory that you've given to us. And we bless you. We pray for our governmental leaders, Lord, in this hour. Lord, we pray for godly leadership to step forth and to shine like never before. We thank you right now. And we give you glory. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his coming. To him be dominion, honor, and glory. Let everyone say amen. 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 Well, listen, thank you so much for tuning in on today. We invite you to please remember to check out our uh, podcast every Saturday, at, I'm sorry, every Friday from 12.30 to 1, all right? And you can get that from the, on the Spread the Gospel uh, podcast network. You can find the link on our webpage under the events tab, all right? Well, listen, until next time, we pray that you have a great super duper week and we know that the Lord is going to continue to do some great things in your life. So next time, don't forget uh, young men ages 12 and up register spirituality and sexuality as godly perspective is coming Tuesday via Zoom at 7.30 Eastern Standard Time. Alright, until then this is Pastor Kelvin signing out saying God bless, we love you.